Welcome back to Harbour Unboxed. Today we are revisiting the battle between the GeForce RTX 2060 Super and Radeon RX 5700 XT. Quite amazingly, it's been two years now since these prices were first introduced back in mid-2019. And for some reason it feels like I was comparing them for the first time not that long ago. But apparently not. Two years is quite a long time in this business. Anyway, about a year ago now, I revisited this battle with a 35 game benchmark and found that on average, the Radeon GPU was 9% faster at 1080p and 8% faster at 1440p. So overall, there wasn't a lot in it, but the 5700 XT did win the majority of the tests and was at times between 20 to 30% faster. Now this updated video will be focusing exclusively on rasterization performance as the 5700 XT doesn't support ray tracing. Personally, I don't believe the ray tracing performance of the 2060 Super to be sufficient enough to the point where it's really usable, but opinions will certainly vary on that, so take my two cents here for what it is, it's just my opinion. In any case, there's no point comparing them with just the 2060 Super using ray tracing, as that would be a somewhat unfair comparison on the GeForce graphics card, as it would just make it look a lot slower. Moreover, if you require ray tracing support, well, that makes or would have made the decision a lot easier. Simply get the GeForce graphics card. Now, another advantage of the 2060 Super is DLSS. And since our last update, Nvidia has been quite busy pushing adoption of their AI rendering technology, expanding the games list and even getting implemented into the popular Unreal game engine. AMD has pushed out their Fidelity FX Super Resolution technology, which isn't quite as good as DLSS, especially at lower resolutions, but it has helped to fill the void. The only issue for this comparison being that FSR works on both the 5700 XT and 2060 Super, and really all graphics cards for that matter. So this isn't really an advantage for the Radeon GPU. It merely helps to minimize the DLSS damage. Anyway, I won't be including DLSS or FSR testing. Rather, I'll be sticking to native performance as it's just a lot cleaner. Part of the reason for that is because image quality of these upscaling technologies does vary quite a lot from title to title, as well as the various tested resolutions, and therefore native is still king, at least in my opinion. Now, the point of this video is to create an updated comparison between these two GPUs in 30 games, many of which are new, titles such as Biomutant, Cyberpunk 2077, Outriders, Resident Evil Village, and Valorant as well as some popular titles which may have been updated since I last tested, such as Warzone, Fortnite, and Apex Legends. So with that, let's go over the setup and then jump into the blue bar graphs. All testing has been conducted on our Ryzen 9 5950X test system using 32GB of DDR4 3200CL14 memory, along with the latest available display drivers. Again, 30 games have been tested at 1080p, 1440p, and 4K, and we'll take a close look at the data for around a dozen titles before jumping into the usual breakdown graphs. Please note that all graphs will be made available to Floatplane and Patreon members. Okay, let's get into it. Starting with Assassin's Creed Valhalla, which is an AMD sponsored title, we find that the 5700 XT is well ahead of the 2060 Super here, delivering a whopping 32% more performance at 1080p, 29% more at 1440p, and 24% more at 4K. Of course, this title is optimized for Radeon GPUs, but it just goes to show how well a game can run on AMD hardware when optimized for it. As a result, the 5700 XT was able to deliver smooth, playable performance at 1080p and 1440p using the ultra-high quality preset, while the 2060 Super was limited to 1080p using the highest quality settings. So that means for 1440p gamers used in the 2060 Super, it'll make sense to reduce the quality preset. Now, for those of you seeking high frame rates in Warzone with either one of these graphics cards, you want to be gaming at 1080p assuming you're not using lower quality competitive type settings. In any case, you can expect the preset scaling to be quite similar to what we see here, and that means the 5700 XT will be around 34% faster at 1080p, 30% faster at 1440p, and then 37% faster at 4K, though I don't feel either are suitable 4K gaming products, at least in this game. The date has been included merely out of interest. Biomutant is one of the more recently released games that I'm testing with, and it uses the Unreal Engine 4, which does often favor NVIDIA hardware without the appropriate level of optimization. As a result, the 2060 Super is actually able to beat the 5700 XT in this game, though it was just 6% faster at 1080p, with performance identical at 1440p and 4K. 
Given both GPUs came in at a cost of $400 US when they were released, this is a reasonable result for the 5700 XT, even if it isn't the norm amongst the new and old games. Moving on, we have another newly released video game in Outriders. Interestingly, this is another Unreal Engine 4 game, but this one works much better on AMD hardware, and here we see that the 5700 XT was 16% faster at 1080p, and then 10% faster at 1440p and 4K. So some reasonable performance gains there, they're not massive at 1440p and 4K, but certainly becoming quite significant at 1080p. The 5700 XT was also 16% faster than the 2060 Super and Horizon Zero Dawn at 1080p, then 12% faster at 1440p and 8% faster at 4K, though again, neither are really that suitable for 4K gaming. It's again the 1080p data where the 5700 XT really pulls ahead of the GeForce GPU, hitting 100 FPS, which is quite an impressive result using the maximum quality settings. Shadow of the Tomb Raider is three years old now, so it's certainly not a new title, but it still looks great and is highly demanding. Here we're seeing the 5700 XT is faster, but not by a huge margin, delivering seven to 9% more frames across the three tested resolutions. The Doom Eternal data is very interesting and is quite different to what we've seen thus far. At 1080p, the margins are somewhat irrelevant because despite the 5700 XT offering 12% more performance, the 2060 Super is still pushing over 200 FPS, which is obviously plenty of performance. That margin though was increased to 17% at 1440p, and for those wanting to keep frame rates up around 140 FPS, the 5700 XT does a much better job here. Then at 4K we find that the 5700 XT is 32% faster, hitting 98 FPS opposed to 74 FPS, and that is a significant difference, and it meant that with the game maxed out at 4K, the Radeon GPU was able to deliver highly playable performance. That said, the experience was still quite nice using the RTX 2060 Super. Moving on, we have Death Stranding, and here the 5700 XT plays exceptionally well, delivering 151 FPS at 1080p, making it 25% faster than the 2060 Super. The margin remains much the same at 1440p. Here it was 26% faster, delivering 112 FPS on average, opposed to 89 FPS with the 2060 Super. Scaling remained consistent even at 4K, and this result is particularly interesting because the 5700 XT was able to deliver 64 FPS, whereas the 2060 Super dipped down into the 40s for what was a noticeably worse experience at this extreme resolution. Next up we have Dirt 5, which was released late last year, and this is an AMD sponsored title, though it does appear to run well on Nvidia hardware. The RTX 2060 Super was good for 74 FPS on average at 1080p, and while that's a solid result, the 5700 XT was 23% faster, hitting 91 FPS. Then at 1440p, the margin is extended slightly to 26%, and while that is a significant performance difference, it's even more significant when you realize that the 2060 Super fell just short of 60 FPS, while the 5700 XT never dipped as low as 60 FPS. The 21% performance advantage seen at 4K for the Radeon GPU also means with some visual quality settings tweaked slightly, it will be possible to hit 60 FPS, whereas the 2060 Super will need to degrade the image quality quite significantly in order to achieve the same frame rate. Watch Dogs Legion is an Nvidia sponsored title, though it does also appear to run quite well in Radeon GPUs, and here we see that the 5700 XT was 11% faster at 1080p, 13% faster at 1440p, and 16% faster at 4K, though neither GPU provided playable frame rates here. Ideally, you'd lower the quality preset one or two notches with these GPUs, but doing so should see the margins remain much the same. The second last game tested is Resident Evil Village, and here the 5700 XT offered 24% more performance at 1080p, 27% more at 1440p, and 22% at 4K. Truth be told, both delivered more than sufficient performance at 1080p and 1440p, but if you're after a truly high refresh rate experience with the maximum quality visuals, only the 5700 XT can deliver that. Last up we have Cyberpunk 2077, and it's worth noting that we're not using the highest quality settings here, rather the preset has been dialed back one notch from ultra to high. This is a rather interesting point to note because at 1080p, the 5700 XT only rendered 74 FPS on average, and the 2060 Super 68 FPS. Now that is highly playable, which is good, but enabling ray tracing on the 2060 Super tanks performance. And while DLSS can help recover some of the lost frames, the quality at 1080p isn't good, 
and therefore, in my opinion, entirely defeats the purpose of enabling ray tracing, which presumably you're doing to improve visuals in the first place. Okay, so here's the 30 game average data and we'll look at how they compare across individual titles in a moment. But what we can quite plainly see here is a 15% performance advantage for the 5700 XT at 1080p and then 14% at 1440p and 4K. Those margins aren't huge, but they're not insignificant either, especially given they're approaching the point where I deem them to be in different performance tiers, and they certainly are in some games, so let's take a look at that. Looking over the 1080p data, we see less than half a dozen titles where the 5700 XT was only faster by a 3% margin or less, losing in just a single game, and that was Biomutant by a 5% margin. Then in 21 of the 30 games tested, the 5700 XT was faster by double digit margins, and then significantly faster in 11, where it enjoyed a 20% or greater performance advantage. In my opinion, margins of 20% or greater really do place the 5700 XT in a different performance tier, and this for me makes the Radeon GPU a far more consistent performer, delivering very strong performance at 1080p across all titles. The margins at 1440p are again very similar, and as we saw in a number of instances, the extra 10% or more performance you get with the 5700 XT could mean the difference between a smooth playable 60fps experience or having to dial down the quality settings, while other games could achieve high refresh rate performance, again without having to fine tune the quality settings. The 4K data is largely irrelevant as I've mentioned a number of times now, and that's because neither GPU is really powerful enough to run at this resolution in most games. But we have the data anyway, so here it is. Again, on average, the 5700 XT was 15% faster. Now, when compared to the 2020 data, the 5700 XT has extended its lead over the 2060 Super from 8% on average to 15%, and that is quite a significant difference. However, there are some new games helping AMD out here, and the removal of titles such as Vermintide 2, The Outer Worlds, War Thunder, and Assassin's Creed Odyssey will also have helped the Radeon GPU. But we are seeing some rather significant improvements in titles such as PlayerUnknown's Battlegrounds, which was previously a 7% loss for the Radeon GPU, but now it's a 5% win. We're not talking about huge margins in either direction, but that is quite a turnaround. It's hard to say exactly what this is down to, but the extra performance has likely come the way of driver updates, possibly game updates even, and of course, don't forget that we have upgraded from our Intel test system to the Ryzen 9 5950X. Another game where the 5700 XT is now doing better is Fortnite. Previously it was 2% slower, so again not a big margin there, but it is now 9% faster. And again it's virtually impossible for me to work out why this is, as the game has undergone some pretty major changes in the last year, and we are now forced to test an entirely different section of the game due to map updates. We're even seeing changes for older games like Shadow of the Tomb Raider. Previously the 5700 XT was 13% faster, but now it's only 7% faster. And although that is a very small change, I can at least tell you what's going on here. Previously the game was tested using SMAAT2X, but shortly after that we moved to TAA at the request of viewers. So a subtle change there, but it does change the margins a little bit in Nvidia's favour. In fact, almost all of the games that overlap between the 2020 and 2021 tests have seen some kind of change in performance margins, Apex Legends being about the only exception here. So the tests aren't really comparable given many of the games used for testing previously have now been dropped, and of course we have new games, and then for comparing previously tested games it's important to note that we're using an entirely different test system, a newer version of Windows 10, updated display and game software, but it's an interesting comparison all the same. So that's how the Radeon RX 5700 XT and GeForce RTX 2060 Super compare in 2021. Of course, both GPUs performed exceptionally well, and really, depending on your needs, they probably don't need to be replaced just yet, which is certainly a good thing given that you can't really buy a graphics card at the moment. All of that said, we're now two years down the track. Which one was the better buy in 2019? was never expected, at least by us, that the 5700 XT would age better. There's really very little evidence to support such a claim. RDNA certainly isn't a future-proof architecture, and there's no VRAM advantage here. It's possible AMD has further refined their driver, but ultimately it will come down to how many games are well optimized for Radeon GPUs, like what we saw in titles such as Warzone, Assassin's Creed Valhalla, Borderlands 3, and several others.
Truth is, we knew from day one that the 2060 Super was based on a much more feature-rich architecture, obviously Turing supports technologies such as real-time ray tracing and DLSS, but it also supports the DirectX 12 Ultimate feature set as well as sampler feedback and mesh shaders. We know NVIDIA diehards will be quick to point this out, but how important is it? In a way, this question really does answer itself. We're now two years down the track and still yet to see a single game that leverages any of these features, of course, excluding DLSS and ray tracing. And it's unknown when and how these features will be implemented and what it means for the battle between the 2060 Super and 5700 XT. And of course, they might prove beneficial down the track, it's just a matter of when, and the longer it takes, the less relevant this point becomes. As for ray tracing and DLSS, as I've said a number of times now, I don't feel that the ray tracing support of the RTX 2060 Super is or was a key selling point, as you're at best looking at a heavily compromised experience, and the titles where you can enjoy it are extremely limited and often receive support well after the game's release. Take Doom Eternal, for example. I strongly feel at this point in time that ray tracing is far more practical for use with a high-end GPU, and it's one of the reasons why I recommend the GeForce RTX 3080 over the Radeon RX 6800 XT and RTX 3090 over the 6900 XT. Now, DLSS on the other hand is an excellent feature that will often prove highly beneficial for the 2060 Super at resolutions such as 1440p, and in particular 4K, if you want to achieve playable performance there. So that is a killer feature that's certainly well worth considering when buying your next GPU. As I said earlier, the games list is growing and supports getting to a good place where we can really start talking about DLSS as a key selling point of GeForce GPUs. All of that said, as it stands in mid-2021, the Radeon RX 5700 XT is the superior performer and will provide the most value in the vast majority of games. The only exception here being ray tracing, so again, if you want or care about RT support, then the RTX 2060 Super is the obvious choice. But I've already made my opinion clear on that one, so it'll be for you to decide what's best here. Personally, I'm very keen to revisit this comparison in a year's time to see if things have started to swing in the 2060 Super's favour, especially because I'm not expecting it to, but we always love being surprised. On a final note, if for some reason you have regretted your 5700 XT purchase, the good news is you can currently sell it for almost twice what you paid, as they're selling on eBay for between $700 and $800 US, and that's around $100 to $200 US more than the 2060 Super. Of course, you will probably need to buy another graphics card, so it may not be the best idea to sell right now, but if you could sell now and hold out, the changeover would net you RTX 3080 Lite performance. And that is going to do it for this GPU revisit. If you liked the video, you know what to do. You can also subscribe for more content. And if you'd like to become a Harbour Unbox community member, then you can follow the links in the video description, Floatplane or Patreon, one of those will work. And yeah, you can sign up and get access to our exclusive Discord server, monthly live streams with two myself where we answer your questions directly. Uh, we also do Q and A's, behind the scenes content, a lot of cool stuff there. So if you're interested, feel free to check the links out in the video description. Uh, also at the moment, we do have new hardware unavailable merch, worth checking out, pretty cool stuff. There's a few other things there as well, hoodies, t-shirts and a few designs. So if you're interested, the merch link will also be in the video description. Anyway, Thank you very much for watching. I'm your host, Steve, and I'll see you again next time.